right. Home beat door. We'll start with the play. Welcome everybody to the work session, uh, October 7, 2024, 9.30 a.m. Signed by the Secretary yep. Treasurer. Call the roll. Yep. Scott Horowitz. Present. Ed Warner. Present. Present. Uh, Chip Marin. Here. Present. Uh, Joe McLaughlin. Here. Matt Parsons. Present. We're all here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice to see everybody. We have some discussions on. We'll get right into business. Maple Avenue, Noyak Creek Boat Launch. Yeah, we, I mean, I guess uh, I talked to Tim quick on this, and I guess I did too. I didn't realize we were both doing it at the same time, but it's going to be rectified for now. And then we'll have further discussion at another time about all these ramps at the end of these roads. Well, I'm right. talking the dirt ramps that yeah. we, yes. we've been traditionally maintaining, but not necessarily. I know you're sitting there. Do you have something to say? No, no. Uh, you would got to come yeah, up if you I, talk, yeah. but. I can give you a good summation of it. Basically, these are road ends that have evolved into uh, launching ramps for the local duck hunters, fishermen, uh, kayakers, and people like that. Um, they're some in private communities, some in, uh, you know, just town roads. And basically, uh, working with the past uh, town engineer, Walter Bundy, on trying to rectify some of these roads with the ability for the public to continue to use them, the town engineer had ideas of putting guardrails on, on the ends of them, with these uh, rock uh, encasements with grass plantings for like a filtering system for the you know the w runoff from the water, and it would preclude everybody from using the roads. And so I went with to Walter Bundy when he was uh, the town engineer, and I asked him, you know, to evaluate each road in, in, in Hampton Bays, especially so that we had a launching ramp and also this uh, mechanism to catch the road runoff. Many of these roads are just you know basically dirt ramps that. You know, the, the trustees, uh, some of the villages have helped out to put stone and uh, other, other material there so they don't wash out so readily. Um, what happened last summer is we had a seven inch rainfall in Noyak and a lot of the road ends, even with the stone that we placed there, washed out. So uh, I talked to our special counsel, Joe Lombardo, and with, you know, the help of the, the board here, I'd like to make a list of all these road ends and you know, evaluate them, and maybe have some kind of uh, you know something in our blue book that either us or an IMA with the villages, uh, Ox Pasture and Boatswain's yeah, Landing in, right. in Southampton, uh, Cove Road and Bluff Point in Sac Harbor, Sac Harbor Village. So there's you know there's there multi-jurisdictional uh, you know territories. So I just do like a memorialization yeah. of the blue book, so it but, makes it clear, especially yeah. for the future boards, in terms of yeah. what the responsibilities are and what yeah. the access points yeah. are, because they're not on the general list. They are so, something historically that's been taken care of, but you want a more formal memorialization. Yeah. Well. Some of them are on our access right. list, but some of them are just, you know, traditional uses. Yes, but not on the list. So so I would like to memorialize them, so that way Get the public in. will have use of them in perpetuity. Is, 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 is Mount's Point under our purview? No, that would be the villages because oh, we switched okay. Shinnecock Road for the Munns okay. Point property, okay. and uh, when Mr. Smith uh, didn't want people launching next to his house, okay. so we uh, the you trustees the and, and the village, yeah. But but I'll, but I'll make a list of them throughout the whole town, and everybody else can give if contribute. I understand it's consistent with the mission of the trustees, which is to encourage and provide access to the water. Okay. If we've traditionally been doing it, then we should continue. We should look at it with an eye towards making the, the facilities something people will be aware of and use. Yeah. Okay. Memorializing. Yep. And just make the public aware that these traditionally were always access points whereby you usually needed a four-wheel drive. You know, we're not going to make them pop and, you yeah. know, perfectly yeah. accessible. They're just access to the water and, you know, use at your own risk. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, precisely. And also, yeah. We have to, if we undertake to do something, we have to undertake to do it in the right way and not create a situation where we might be in trouble. So, thank you. Yeah. All right, we're done with that. We'll move on to Trustee Parsons. Yes. So I've had a lot of community interests in Shore Road in Remsenburg. Um, we've had Timmy and the crew down there twice this year, uh, most recently last week, because the road, speaking of roads that end in the bay, um, yeah. this roadway is being undermined 
actively. Is this the one you brought to our attention last time? Yeah, and since Timmy and the crew went there in the spring, they cleaned it all up. And then in the summer, it eroded away enough that there was all these big hunks of asphalt again that the community had been pulling out of the water and piling up in the shore. And it's, it's an ongoing problem. But also the community uh, is concerned that the sand that used to be here is being washed away. And you can actually see it accumulating a little bit to the east. James, if you can go a little bit to the east, that, that canal there, they're asking if that sand can get pumped up onto that beach. I'm saying, well, see, I'll see what I can do. So, I mean, it's kind of like your Fort Pond issue where it's, you know, it's... it's oh, Fort Pond, far, 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 yeah, yeah, yes, far, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. you know, uh, I don't know. That could be private. Could be private. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now it. it's private. Yeah. The well, inside of it is. We gotta do some research. Yeah, we'd have to find out. And permits and mm -hmm. so Janice fits in. Not as easy as it was. Yeah. So. Well, that's very similar to what has happened over uh, in Shinnecock Hills, uh, just west of Crab Road, uh, between Crab, Crab Road and uh, Pony and Teepee Street. There's a dug canal, and that's exactly what happened to that dug canal. All the material that was on the beach eventually entered into the mouth of that canal, completely closed it off, and over the last you know 30 years, it's all wetlands have uh, started to uh, take over there. So dredging that. At the one I'm talking about in Shinnecock is almost it's impossible because there's a wetlands there. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's very close or almost similar to what I mean. Yeah, you see there's, there's grass. Is that a breakwater right there going? It is. It's a wooden breakwater. It's kind of dilapidated. Mr. Um, President, yeah. uh, Trustee Parsons, I, I was copied on that. Uh, oh, that you oh, so you want okay. to get an to this? Why don't you yeah. put officially <laughs> the county on that? Good, uh, good morning, Aaron, yeah, yeah. Aaron Tertuni in West Hampton. I'm actually uh, past commodore of the West Hampton Yacht Squadron, which is uh, just to the far left where you see the tennis court on that aerial yep. photo. Yep. Yep. And I was copied on the communication to Trustee Parsons. So uh, quite familiar with this spot, you're correct. That's a deteriorated breakwater. And um, what's happening is when the breakwater was uh, intact, it held all the sand in that compartment that extends if you go a little bit farther west, please, James, you can see there's a compartment by the breakwater of the yacht squadron, and then there was a similar one that came off that point on the right, and that kind of contained that whole beach system in a cell. As the breakwater deteriorated, that's when the sand began leaking around the corner and filling in the channel. Um, so it's um, from uh, my assessment, and I listened to everything that was said, and I agree, uh, the, the solution here is twofold. Um, you can't just take the sand, pick it up, and move it because it's going to migrate right back into that channel. Um, so to, and I know people don't like to hear this, but to extend that breakwater a little bit in order to create a stable beach between the two breakwaters and stop the shoaling. Extend it or repair it? Repair it. I mean, extending it. Is no, I mean, just uh, when I say extend it, right now it ends pretty much at the shoreline, the, the new section. You can see where it returns back. Yeah. Uh, that's the new section, and then where it goes seaward is the old section that needs to that, that really needs to be. I repaired. mean, the seaward section is where the leak is. Yeah. And I know that <clears throat> when we had a leak in the shitty talk inlet. Yeah. Um, on on the on the east side, like it was it was a matter of like weeks, and it just blew right. It sucked all the sand right out to the right to the dune line. So yep. it's probably a similar problem. That it's happened on here, a micro just, scale. On a micro scale because it's the bay. Yeah. Do, do we know who owns that breakwater? Uh, no. So we got to figure yeah. out who put that in. On a, there's a permit for it because this has been an ongoing discussion okay. long before right. even I was here. <laughs> but that canal yeah. is like Eddie said is might might not be salvageable if it's wetlands. Well, uh, the 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 white colored material is all sand, sand. Um, and then I haven't been back in there in a while, but I'm happy to go back, take some photos, and share them with, with the board. Uh, but certainly the sand could be dredged if there is wetlands; it can't be dredged. But if it's upland uh, beach grass, for example, that's not protected. And how much area. interest do you have from the homeowners on that creek to a actually lot. address this? A lot. So they're going to have to make the charge. Yeah. yeah. And we can work think, with them. I think the object of, of uh, Mr. Smythe's letter to the board was, hey, this is a problem. We, we'd like to figure out how to solve it with you. Well, we're going to get two, a two-fold solution. One would be water quality in that dug canal. And second, uh, the environmental benefit and the public benefit 
to reach for nourishment along there. Yeah. I and mean, having that a nice stable beach. Yeah. Because all the, those last four houses, which are private, they're all eroding terribly. And, and that breakwater that's currently there that's falling apart doesn't need to be that long. No, it doesn't need to be that long. In fact, uh, uh, I can uh, work with whomever and, and get one that's the proper length in order to maintain a stable beach one. As long as it's the hole is patched, like right. that's the major. That's the that's key. That's the major issue. Yeah. The one that's like right, just just seaward of the beach itself. Yeah. Is yeah. Little, that's where your problem. That's is. where it's all going. Yeah. <clears throat> In the intertidal, where all the wave action hits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Trustee Parsons, for bringing that up, and I'm glad I was here to add a little bit yeah, to it. Thank you, John. Yeah. Okay, call upon me, and uh, I'll relay to Mr. Smythe the conversation, and of course. If you anything comes up in the meantime, please reach out to me or him. Okay. But you got to get all of them to be like, we want this sand somewhere else. Yeah. And then it's like, ideally, you want a perfect spot for the sand. Yeah. <coughs> Permitting. Wait. Permitting. Yeah. Time. Plus. Two years. Does that also include pumping the sand and they've got to put the building in the breakwater too, probably? Right? Yeah. yeah, we've got to make a determination. Yeah, see who's it is. Exactly. Yeah. You've got a lot of work to do on that. I mean, you can't, you know, you're talking about a big project. All right, you got something else there? I do. Uh, I want to let everybody know that uh, Timmy and the crew were able to move the floating wetland out of the Jackson Avenue yard. They were able to uh, install it temporarily along the shore at Sloverbrook Pond. Uh, we've got signage up on it, so we'll be ready to plant it and position it next spring for its growth. Um, and if this goes well, um, it'd be a really good thing. Actually, you know, there was some talk about relocating those ones in, in Mill Pond as well. If this goes well, we'll find a home for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, yeah, so if anyone has any ideas on species or, or things that we could do with this floating wetland, you know, we have some time. Isn't yeah, there a whole list of plantings? I know Anne well, was involved in this when we did the one in Mill Pond, and I think she had a whole list of plantings that they used. Okay, I'll, I'll reach out to her. Yeah, and, she uh, should know because she actually went down and did the uh, maintenance of it, took the, you know, the dead stuff off of there and cleaned them up a couple right. of times. Well, and then originally, wasn't there a, didn't they work with Pickerel on this? It's like Chris, growth rates. Chris Pickerel? Yes. Yeah, growth Nutrients rates are, based on like how much nitrogen and phosphorus is in the water. Yep, that's a good point. point. There's, a whole, yeah. there's, there's a whole study, to, there's a whole basis on that floating wetland. The use of it. The use of it was not just for clarifying the water, it was also a scientific study of quantifying how much phosphorus and nitrogen was in the bay. So like they could base it on growth rate, I believe it was of the roots, but I could be wrong. Right. You can reach out to Chris Pickle from Cornell. Chris Pickle will help you. Yes. I, I'd say that is your first contact. Correct. What do you want, what should I put in this wetland? Right. And he's super helpful. Correct. Cool. Yeah, that's good. So, yeah, we're working on several things with Mr. Pickle. All right. He must be a doctor by now. You can call him a doctor. <laughs> um, anybody else? Let's see. We can move right into general permit applications for determination. Um, I have Robert Reichenbach, Jr., 15 Romana, Surfside Environmental. I see Daphne is here. I almost wasn't. You almost. Because I didn't see this until 5.15 on Friday. I'm moving to my office right now. Ah, so, uh, busy. Oh, <laughs> no good email alerts. <laughs> well, you're moving your office, right? Julia Preston. Um, yeah. Okay. So we want to uh, install approximately 100 linear feet, 7.5 feet wide angled, partial subgrade natural stone and sand to remediate and restore an eroded sand beach and portions of the existing developed property. Shoreline erosion restoration is comprised of 44 cubic yards of 80% cobble, 20% sand mix, 100 linear feet of 500 pound toast stone. That's 28 cubic yards of 3 to 400 pound stone, and almost 10, or just over 9 cubic yards of 8 to 10 inch core stone. Um, that's 28 cubic yards of 12 inch deep bedding stone. Post final grade to be planted with beach grass plugs, 12 inches on center. 
Yes. So this is a classic case of uh, unrevetted property stuck between two bulkheads and taking the brunt of uh, storm events um, to their property. Uh, there's actually a photo I submitted with my application that shows some of the effects during uh, storm events. That is the rack line. You can see it's very high. It's very close to their swimming pool, actually, so it's becoming a detriment uh, to the structures. Uh, so we tried to come up with a plan that would mitigate the effects of this these storm events, um, doing like a typical uh, shoreline restoration with varying degrees of rocks uh, and built fabric. And then, you know, covering it over with sand and planting it with beach grass. So we are showing it uh, basically at mean high water um, and going uh, landward. Right now, he's got, he's trying to mitigate it himself, and it's, just, it's not working. He's just got like some buckets there with sandbags and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's going pretty far behind that fence that you see in the photos. What's the difference in the grain of the rock wall versus the bulkheads on either side? Uh, I believe it should be. Hold on. Yes, please, yes. We have it going up to five, um, which is basically <coughs> basically five feet higher than the high water. It should be... No, the abated lights currently. Currently, what's the, the height difference between the, the bulkheads and this, this wall? Oh, it's pretty significant. Uh, on, on the south side, that, that bulkhead is higher. That one was given a permit to uh, increase the height, I think, by 12 or 18 inches from what it was previously. So that's part of the reason that you know they're not getting any water on their property. I think the guy on the north side may see a little bit of water, but it's mostly going to my client's property. Um, but you can see in my photos that the bulkhead to the south is let's say in that low tide. It's pretty significantly uh, different in elevation where the one on the north side is less significant. So basically what we're planning would be in keeping with the guy to the north and uh, probably still be lower than the ones to the south, but with... Yeah, I've seen multiple projects similar to this where you have a new construction, it's like a new construction and you have the town planning board approving the height of ele elevating of a house and then the, they, the grade is increased and then it pitches to the one person. I'm guessing that this this guy's house has, has is this new construction as well, his house or his house. No. 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 So, it's, so it's like his grade has stayed the same whereas the neighbors yeah, I don't, have raised the grade. I don't know if the neighbor had new construction, but he definitely both neighbors sought permits from this board uh, for their bulkheads. So now we're facing the problem as the monkey in the middle trying to. Uh, I mean, when you look at this picture, it doesn't look that, that much of a difference between this bulkhead and the grade of these pillars. Oh, there isn't. But the other side does. How do you know what the other range choice was? Uh, they've all just received. No one has given so any. So you don't know where you're at yet. Yeah. When was when was the neighbor raised? You know when when it, when it, when it was what permitted? Unfortunately, I have that information, but I do not have it with me because I was scrambling to get this together. The, the northern <laughs> the northern property is an old uh, cement wall. Uh, the northern property is a vinyl bulkhead. You have a picture of it right here, and it's a... Uh, well, beyond a, the vinyl bulkhead. Oh. It's a return. Yeah. So they just maintain the old return? The cement. Now, the wetlands that uh, grasses that are currently there, 
How are you going to contend with them? Well, they're pretty minimal, uh, and they're a result from obviously the water sitting on the property longer now, than. I'm talking about the ones that are down further where that's in the bog. There's an old piece of bog here, and you can see right. it very clearly in this picture that you know during the summertime it's you know spot kind of there, and it's it's a flourishing wetlands. Are you just going to cover it up? Well, or, the, or the I, I what is the back. extent of the project that you're going mm -hmm. proposing? These are the ones that were in the file. Oh, then somebody else has mine. Well, I just. Okay. Yeah, these must be mine. They're not stamped. Did they stamp everything? Yeah, they should be. These aren't stamped either. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, they, well, were the, they were in the file. It was, I, I've been at this property a couple of times because I had a friend of mine who's a construction person and he asked me to take a look at it. and. You know, I did have concern because there's, you know, there's, you know, wetlands there that, you know, this project, are you going to cover them up, which is a net loss of wetlands, and I know the DC would not be in favor of that because the wetlands are considerably seaward of where the stone and the, and the fence is. Well, no, I don't think we would because I see the bog there. The bog is right in front of the, the bulkhead line. That's, I'm asking you where the project. I, I see. I, I the stones that are currently there are to the south of the where the bog is, and that's grass. And you know, it's more of a self-help kind of a situation that he moved some of those those stones there. But the material that where the cursor is right now, that's that's what I'm concerned about. That yeah, so wetlands. that's what I'm saying is that we would start just landward of that. The, everything would come up from there. Yeah. Because if you look at the plan, and, and the whole project would go behind it, and d are you considering any wave reverberation coming off your project that would scour that wetlands out? I think we have anything else considerably landward of that. Well, I'm just you know. Yeah, I mean it's like that, you know to say that you're going to install major construction, you know. I don't want to. Those wetlands and, yeah. and, and you're going to you're, you're going to protect them. Is, well, I'm here to start the conversation because right. yeah. I so have tried to start I would say kick, behind the scenes. I would say kick this it was landward. the easiest way to get something accomplished. I would say so kick, kick, kick the wall landward to where the existing rock wall is, personally. Yes, I'm glad that you came because you, you know, this way you've got input from everybody, plus you still have the other regulatory authorities to right. go through. So this is good. So, uh, yeah, we can move it landward. Uh, that's not an issue. It's just that that's why I'm here. We yeah. gave a starting point, and now it's uh, a matter of. I mean, that makes a very good point with that wetland, right? I mean, that's going to stop you, and we're not going to be the only ones that say no. I mean, if you go down in now, you're going to see there's a there's a there's a flourishing wetland. Yeah. So I would say kick it landward to almost where the existing wall is, raise the grade of it, and and uh, you know raise the grade equal to that of the highest bulkhead. Anybody else have any ideas now, on that? Now, the property that you're working on, what is the elevation of that property? Cons to the Is it considerably lower than the adjoining properties? Because I, as I remember being down there, it's kind of like almost like a yes. bowl. So if you raise up the, the land, the seaward end of the property with a rock revetment, and you get overwash, you're going to have a pond. Yes. Which is... That is another concern. That's a real that mess, yeah. That's, you know, it's almost counter... And that blowout sometimes, isn't it? it yeah. yeah. And also you're gonna to get to your neighbors, it's gonna go off to the sides and could cause some, you know. Hmm. Well, not if they're higher still. Yeah. Depends how much water builds up there and how much elevation you have of the rock revetment. If the rock revetment is higher than the adjoining property owners, then the water's gotta go somewhere. Else. Feeling the brunt of the, the issue right now because yeah. it's got nowhere to go and it's probably eroding out their property in, in the process. So, well, well, according to that picture, the neighboring property is quite a bit higher. It looks like they increased the grade when they did the bulkhead, the top picture. Y yeah, but it wasn't, you know, these. So, so the, the, you're going to have to get some elevations of the adjoining properties and see if you can. 
I, that, I mean, obviously, this would be an upland detail of whether you could level the grade of that property equal to that of the other ones when you do this project. But that would be out of our jurisdiction. That. Well, but the whole, the whole, right. See, the whole thing is you know, where you're where you're starting, still being in our jurisdiction. Obviously, we're not looking to build a bulkhead that's not made out of you know vinyl or what have you. Right. You're looking to attenuate the wave action and lessen the erosion, not create an issue with the wetland that's already existing seaward, right? And you also don't want to be pushing water, you know, to either one of the right. property owners. So it's critical that you get, um, that you check all these boxes and you get an elevation that's going to, you know, not create those issues or not do harm to the existing wetland. So, I mean... Stopping water from getting totally on that property is going to be difficult, uh, but I think the fact that they, you know you could lessen the effects of that occurrence is really what the key is. I think you're right. trying to achieve. Yes. So I think you know is to go back to the drawing board a little bit, factoring in what the concerns of the board, it, you know what they are, what you've heard here from everybody, all good valid points, and at the same time, as you're aware, balancing out the requests from everybody else that's going to have a request or an opinion or suggestion on this from the other regulatory agencies. Daphne, did they also, did they have a, a prior con, uh, consultant that they were working with? I don't know. I remember someone else coming before us with this conversation. I believe it was on this property. Am I right, James? Not sure either, but I, I think you got you, you know you got a good conversation start. I think you got a little work cut out for you in every direction, but I think you got some good direction here now in terms of what the concerns. James, do we have a, a GIS map going back a couple of years on that property, just to see how it's eroded? Yeah, see. Yeah. Look at that. Right after the hurricane. Yeah, it's getting scurred out, yeah. Right after the hurricane. But my client is basically, you know, now see what month it is going, oh, geez, we're in, we're in for another year, and we, right. you know, but nobody wants to wake up and see. Yeah, you're not going to block it all out like it's a bulkhead made out of stone. You're, gonna, you're just going to lessen, you know, the creek, lessen that erosion. Unless you elevate the whole property, you're going to see water right almost up to the, up to the pool. That's, that's what's going to happen. Because if you put a rock wall there without putting some elevation of the upland between the house and, the, and that rock wall, you're going to have that water just, it's going right. to come. That's going to push outside of our jurisdiction. Yeah. Right. So then how am I um, dealing with that? Am I well, getting a permit from you first? Well, that, I, that's I, your... Yeah, I, I would work with us. I would find out we, whether you can raise the elevation of the property before you go spending the money on, a, on increasing the bulk on the stone because, like Ed said, it's kind of useless. But I don't see, you, but she really, they, they really don't have an option, though. They have to find some way to mitigate the continued they erosion. To right. They have to yeah. mitigate that erosion. They've got to attenuate that wave energy to preserve as much of their property as possible without creating the concerns of this board. So I think that that's a good starting point. But the thought process, thinking that you're going to block all that water out, I, I don't see that as a possibility, right? So that being said, you know, take what everybody said and, and kind of try and re, redirect that at the same time, try and get feedback from, from the others, right? To, that way you're not, you know, spinning your wheels all over the place here. I think and the then, DUC is going to have concern though, because of the wetlands being uh, seaward of the uh, project. So you'd have to really make that project almost soften it up so, you know, you get rid of the wave reverberation going back so it doesn't wash the wetlands that it's currently out of the area or out of there. Well, that, that was what I was just going to yeah, say. Yeah, it's like, bo the bog stops halfway down the property yeah, because what, what, what it, the peat bog. So that's why it's still there. When you get south of that, yes, it's, it's right. Well, so that's not going to work out very well in reality. Stay? It's, it's not going to stay. Right. It's, it's not going to stay. 
It's not. You can make all the drawings you want. I, well, I just don't see them working out. But. Not only that, last year we had an unrealistic uh, amount of easterly winds. It was like three times a week we had an easterly windstorm. So that, from the Ponquag Bridge to your client's property, that's the fetch that you have to look at every every storm. And it was like one after another, after another, right. after another. That's why they get, suffered such bad erosion there. I think that so it has to be realistic look, expectations. Look, I, I think we can work. work on a project here, just, you know, you know, I think you've gotten some notes here. So to we can get good feedback from everybody. All right, so we'll hold this one. We're gonna hold. We're, gonna, we're holding. We're holding this one, obviously. You want to do her others? Yeah. Do you have Thomas? Um, no, you have, have Ocean View. Ocean View. Yeah. So they're all. These are all uh, very different, very interesting projects that I have here today. Uh, so Ocean View X. This is 16 Ocean View Drive in Shinnecock Hills. The um, property is part of Shinnecock Beach Road, so I'm here because uh, I believe you have full jurisdiction over everything that happens in Shinnecock Beach Road. Correct. So um, my client is redeveloping the property and um, submitted something last on October 2nd. I just want to make sure that we have the, yes, that's the right one. October 3rd, yes. Yep. Um, they're reconstructing their existing residence, but with that, there's a few things that are already existing in Shinnecock Beach Road that they'd be removing. This is all on the northern, yes, northern side of the easement um this is also a, a slope as most of them are so it's at the highest parts of the slope where uh they would be removing some wood steps and decking um there's a wood tie wall that they would like to rebuild in, in place uh there's new steps that will be accessing the new residence um, the main things is that there's an existing um, wood walkway that goes down toward their existing legal um, bulkhead and deck with uh, access stairs. Yep. So they're going to maintain the deck with the access stairs, but they would like to remove the wood walkway that kind of hugs that westerly property line. And they're planning a new, somewhat meandering. Um, walkway that's going more east down the grade uh, from where they'll be exiting the property because there's a pool that's going to be put in on that westerly side uh, so instead of hugging the pool and going straight back to that existing walkway they would like to come off the side of this uh, little grass area and then there's a pool enclosure fence that we're also putting uh, as closely to the easement as possible. So when you say remove the walkway, the, is it a wooden walkway currently and they're going to replace it with a wooden a walkway? walkway? Yes. Okay. At grade. And they want to move it? They're going to take out that straight, well, that straight part, and yeah. it's going to come more from that turf area that you see off the left side and kind of go down yeah. the slope. Good ship. It's, it's, it's like meandering. Any old ones, the old ones permitted? Yeah. Already? All right, that I don't know. That I, yeah, we, we got it. I mean, you can say yes, but I, I believe it. Is. They had to, they did a covenant uh, when they redid all of this stuff a number of years ago. Uh, well, it was the prior on that. Did a, one of the, the covenants for the easement. Sand, sand agreement? Sand function agreement? No, for um, just to basically legitimize. That? Yeah, yeah, to say that they know they're within the easement. Okay. Can you get us the paperwork so we can it have It should be in the package. I don't have it with me. Maybe I do. Hold on. How long ago was it? A couple of years. Not that long. I should have a copy of it. Yeah. 2019. 2019. I was on the board, yeah. There was 2019, that, that, more than a couple that years. size of that deck was already approved. Sorry. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. 
Does the survey that department. goes with it show us exactly what's there right now? Do you have it in yours? You can have my copy if you want. We have a certificate of compliance in 2021. Oh. There it is. See, I don't have it. You should have it. I don't see it. I definitely should bring some copies. Right. So, as long as it's consistent with what we did in the yeah. past, because, you know, as of like current, it seems like we're trimming down the size of these landlord decks, I mean, these landlord decks on the ball track, correct? Then? Yes. So. Especially the ones right on the water. Well, so the, the pur purpose well, is to keep know. that. Entirely, not even touch that. It's just a walkway going. Oh, here it is. The walkway is the one you want to change. Yeah. Well, that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, it's, it's not. Sure. 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 Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, we we have the agreement. So I have it. Oh, you do. Yeah. yeah. It's not in the regular hall. <laughs> it's outside. So it's we'll uh, we'll let our attorney look it over and uh, make sure. I actually have met with Joe on this. Yeah, uh, which is coming up. Thank you. Yeah, can you give this yeah. to you? Yeah, Daphne. Daphne is going to. As long as this is anchor, I know Ed's going to kind of mimic what I said. As long as we know that this deck that's there existing is anchored down, anchored down and properly attached, so we're not going to see it in the bay in yeah. a, 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 a northeaster. Um, I don't. I don't it is a pretty high bulkhead. Yeah, it is. It's a pretty high bulkhead, so it's not going to be. Like some of the other ones, but it has to be built properly. Yeah, There's just, ten just, steps to get up there, so it's pretty high. Yeah. For the record, Daphne and I have been consulting about this for months, so it, it's pretty well vetted, and I've spoken with you a few times yeah. about it as well, Ed. So we, I think everything was at the point where she could then file uh, okay. the application for the work. Yep. Uh, no, I remember. <laughs> Yeah, so the only reason that I had submitted this revision is because they had some landscape architects come in and that's where they got into this change with the walkway and they used a pool enclosure fence so we wanted to show one okay. so that there's no ish issue with what they're proposing within the easement. Yeah, this is where it starts to get east of Atterbury Road and it gets pretty Yeah, steep. it starts to get steeper and steeper. Yes, yes, yep. Each one, actually it goes to the east, it gets steeper. Yes, correct. Yes. All right. All right. So we need to move this ahead with Joe's look at the agreement and everything. So we're good. All right. This, this, yeah. this one you can advance. But I would hear you say it's not too late. Okay. Now, the side profile for the sewers. Yes. So we'll need some more stuff. So we'll advance a pending receipt of. So you want uh, elevation. Of the walkway. Uh, and it's stamped by the landscape architect is okay. Mm -hmm. That should suffice, right? Architect stamp. Yeah. Yeah, design professional landscape. Yeah. Okay. Either one or the other. So yeah. yes. Okay. Good. Next. So next, I have a dune walkway on um, Fly Point Road. Yes. I, I drove down the beach on this one just 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 to clarify on this. I, this is old, buddy. This is the old steel bulkhead. This is one of those. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I noticed towards that end, and I didn't get a good look at it. Of there was about where that property is there was a lack of maintenance of the dune in front of the steel bulkhead and there was no there was no snow fencing i'm not saying that it was this property but all the adjoining properties next to it had wasn't there an agreement that yes, you yep. had to maintain the yep. dune in front of the bulkhead? every spring it needs to, okay yeah, i also I didn't see any walkways going down in front of the bulkhead this would be the only walkway that has a staircase. Really? Because there's a per we mimicked this off of a permit. I could be wrong. I, I mean, I was driving quick, but that then, way. yeah. To the west. Yeah, to the west. I mean, I don't know how far down the road you are in this to where the. I think that guy right there has stairs. Yeah. Yeah, that's stairs. That we kind of mimicked our plan off of what we've approved for that. Okay, and that's the only set of stairs on that. 
correct? No, I think you like Elvis. Again, yeah. I don't know if my research. Everybody else seemed to kind of just, yeah. Quite honestly, my client wants to do something as minimal as possible. She doesn't really want. I know it was gorgeous what they had it before. A I was, I, it was gorgeous what was there before. I was surprised she even wanted to change it. She, well, the thing is that they're planning to elevate the house. Yeah. Um, we have a coastal erosion application in with the building department and planning. Uh, so they're, the plan is to elevate the house to be FEMA compliant, maintaining it as one story. And um, then this way, it would the walkway would come right off of the house uh, over the dune. Rather than the old kind of like natural well, looking. It, basically, right now it's a sand path and they have a rolled out walkway. Yeah. I don't know that you guys want that anymore. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I love the simplicity of the rollout walkway. But, but as far as this um, the steel bulkhead there, first we have to make sure that there is a new management plan in front of this. There, there is an agreement. I think it's There's an agreement and somebody's nailing the agreement. Oh, I don't know if it's that piece of property, a piece of property just to the west. Everybody else has snow fence, and everybody yeah. else has the steel bulkhead covered up. And there's one stretch there where it's, yeah. the steel bulkhead is showing up, and we're in October. So, well, yeah, they usually do, yeah, it's they it's they be usually, they usually do the yeah, sand maintenance at yeah. the very end of the winter season, just before plovers show up. No, I understand, but some people are yeah. making an effort, and some people aren't. Yeah. Some people have snow fencing, some people don't. So, some people have dune grass, some people don't. Um, I don't. I don't know which. I was just driving from checking the cut. So I don't know. I'm not accusing this homeowner of it. Um, the other thing is, is. Well, it's good to point out the yeah. fact that people are not maintaining that because that's what exacerbates the issues. The issue. And then the, well, the other is, is. I can see some snow fence in one of my photos. <laughs> <laughs> you might be in the clear. I'm not. I'm not I no, just want to make it's sure. It's not necessarily yeah. this property. Yeah. It's noting that some others some in other the stretch to add yeah. to the erosional issues when that wave energy. And, and you said this is going to, as I remember quickly when I looked over this application, it's going to be a removable stairs, correct? Yes. Oh, good. Because that that stretch is, there's a good chance you're going to lose them no matter yeah. what. So. Yeah, they basically, they would take them out every year and put them up on the house. So, uh, can you the, show the, um, the walkway on the new plan? We... Oh, in my plan? Oh, it's on the survey. Well, and technically, it's supposed to be covered the up. survey to show it. Uh, yeah, the bulkhead, you can't see it right now. Um, yeah, I mean, we can add that to our plans. Like the edge of this to see how much. Seaward of the bar. There's nothing left down there. We're down to almost where it was. You know, we're down to the bulkhead again. Yeah, but having it shown there, that's a that's a fixed I got, point. Uh, I got Mr. Aram so Chichuni, and I, I had a feeling you, that he has a. I didn't want to. I almost was going to reach out, but I, I figured I'd let you just sit there and, and listen. Oh yeah, but, we got a little bit of pumpage going yeah, on, right? Yeah, Aram Tertuni, and yeah. uh, this time on behalf of the uh, Bridgehampton Watermelon Erosion Control District, uh, December one, this board recently approved a permit, and that beach is going to get a lot bigger. Okay. The beaches, but what about the dunes? Well, uh, that will provide the opportunity for the snow fence and thus the dunes. Yeah, I mean, they could be snow fencing now. What I'm get, I understand. I do, I do the sand project, so that's why I'm not in a total panic. <laughs> because what has happened there, and I, um, I have had an adjacent homeowner approach me because of the Meekhoff's, um, you know, the conservation. And um, they were blaming the cut on the sand going in the cut. So I was like, the cut was closed long before the storm. The problem now is that the grade, as you know, because you're doing most of the surveying, the grade is pitching towards the dune. Yeah. And what's happening is if we get a storm surge, it's going over and then making basically the kiddie pools like we used to have, and it's wiping the dune out. Right. So the problem is, is the grade is reversed, inverted almost. So I'm sure when you pump sand, that's going to help and mitigate the issue to get the grade back to slant it towards the ocean. Correct. But, like I said, there's still a lack of effort by some homeowners in front of that steel bulkhead to try and maintain a, a dune. 
Understood. And yeah. hopefully this will give them some incentive. Incentive to possibly be yeah. like, yeah, maybe we want to try and protect it. So I would Well, I think they would do the project after the sand was yeah. pumped in no, the beach. I would do the project. So you can get a good, you could really evaluate what's going yeah. on there. Yeah. And I'll be uh, you know, keeping this board up to date when that project gets underway. I appreciate good. it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, was, I was looking at you sitting there, Aaron, but I didn't want to put you so on the spot. So we just have every basically if everybody on the uh, a board has to agree that we're fine with an elevated walkway. And we want to make sure that the that the um, that the staircase is in fact removable. That's and then um, the railing situation might come in. Is it really annoying? Well, I'm just showing railing. them that stairway that okay. was that way. That's good. Oh no, we took them off. We no, had them. We had them okay. minimally. As far as the manage is removed them. So yeah. it, it, yeah, it's it's, it's consistent to what we've approved before in, along this. Yeah, and is there any way we can draft in it that that the dune in front of the the bulkhead is going to be made once the project is is final that the the dune is going to be there in front of the bulkhead? Well, we can't do that until they do the beach nourishment and then they evaluate it. And, and there's already an agreement with the. With there's the already product. an agreement with those yeah, homeowners. Yeah, yeah, so I think we're covered on covered that. There? All right. Yes. They do have snow fence. It is actually on survey. Okay. Your survey was recently updated. And then, as far as how far out that, I mean, obviously, if the dune keeps increasing there and people keep throwing the dune out, then what happens with that stairway? Is that stairway going to be able to go out farther, or how? How does that work? Well, we can't putting it out further, and then you get a storm, and then it the no, sand no. moves, and then all of a sudden you can't get. I mean, we're so, just right up to the bulkhead. Yeah, is what I'm getting at, like yeah. right there. Well, it's almost like a, a pier line in the bay. How far out do you want to go? And then you get a storm, and then the beach gets washed out, and then you can't get around it. And so I'd love to see it doing there, but yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> that was years ago when there was pines up there. So. Yeah. I, I think we should uh, go with what's proposed here now, and then yeah. once it's, you know, it's going to be removable, so it's not going to be a wintertime uh, issue as far as uh, beach driving access. But uh, and reevaluate it. it. It needs to be, you know, tweaked a little bit. I'm sure your clients will come back and we can revisit it. I agree. So we'll add the bulkhead to the plans. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you're saying that you're okay. Is everybody okay with a raised bulk? Yeah. 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 I think That's it's consistent fine. to what we've yeah. approved before. I like that it doesn't have a railing. And stairs for removal. Yes. So that's fine. Yes. Especially with that switch. Okay. All right. Good. Big uh, Last one. Well, this Get is a stamp redo. Plans. Yeah. Uh, so we got. We have some soundings. Yes. Or, yeah. So we can submit. We submit the soundings. Yes. Okay. And they should be sufficient okay. for what we were seeking. That they're over. They're both over three feet, three and a half feet. Um. So. You mean that we have no problem with, with the, with the uh, ramp or the docks? Or it's good. Yeah, uh, so, over this. so this one should be okay then uh, for stamp plans. Okay. So, so okay. we got everything we need then. So it's four feet was the depth, right? Uh, it's three, three and oh, a half three. on one corner Sorry, and three. three foot eight. I meant three. Yeah. On the other. Great. So, um, okay, so I'll get those plans. Thanks. Okay, great. So, uh, three out of four in advance. <laughs> yeah, the other ones, you got a, a lot of work to do on the other yeah. one. The other range, right? No, I appreciate the feedback. Uh, you had some good direction. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, have a good day. You thank too. You. All right, let's go, let's go back up to where we started here. Uh, land use ecological for Richard Chivarelli at 3859. Hi, guys. Good morning, Chuck. I think this has been looked at before by the board. It's a previous project. Yeah. 333 feet of, uh, of bulkhead. Uh, there was a problem with some uh, docks that were not permitted. So, as an act of uh, conversation, uh, those floats are going to be removed and replaced with more 6 by 20 floats um, uh, up against the bulkhead, parallel to the bulkhead. And um, all of the uh, existing uh, existing brick patio and stone patio are going to be basically taken 
coming up and slope uh, away from uh, the bulk of uh, the reconstructed and sloped away. I think I sent you a picture of some nice uh, Yes, yeah, you did. Again, I, I think this is based on the conversation of the board. Yeah, right. Cleaning up the illegality. <laughs> yes, yes. It's still it's not a good thing. No. No. It no. no. <laughs> just creates a big problem yeah. for everybody. Yeah. The, uh, Behind the bulkhead, is it going to be the st stone splash pad that's yep. currently yep. there? Yep. It looks like well, it's, it that's even taken a beat in the size of uh, softballs and footballs. Yeah. No, they, they'll be uh, 10 foot wide uh, gravel. Yeah, so gravel. I mean, that's a real tough area there. Yeah, the, the existing patios are going to be reconstructed and kind of sloped away from the bulkhead, but, but, but the rest is going to be 10 done. foot. Right. Okay. 10 foot yeah. sand and gravel. Yeah. Okay. It. All right. I'm, good here. I'm also here uh, with Steve Ryder, which is red. Uh, uh, the plants are standing. So it's, it's <coughs> good to know that. So the agenda. The last uh, on the agenda is uh, Steve Ryder, who is yeah. here. Do you want to put your name on there? Just making sure we're advancing that last one. 191 Long Neck Boulevard? Thank you. All right, so for this one, we'll take this yeah. is in Matt's Mr. Mr. Matt Parson in the house. Yes. Yeah, he's been working on this quite a bit. Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. Steve. Steve's a very old friend of mine. Uh, got to know that a very long time. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't look that old. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm older, you know, but uh, 65. We, uh, you know, we've got it. Uh, mm -hmm. We were booking Zooms and knowing we were doing it. You know, mm -hmm. on our power hours and, you know, uh, crazy stuff. But, but anyway, uh, I know he's had a, a problem right. with Mr. Shea. Which you approve and say that for football is not the one. Um, it mentions the boat lift and even a boat cradle, which is no longer there. Um, and so I'd like to keep the boat lift. And the light poles. And the light poles. And the right poles. Yeah, and then I already have a problem with the light poles. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to kind of separate what was in his jurisdiction and what was in your jurisdiction. You know, the Beck Canal is. Are they dark no. sky compliant? I'm sorry? Are they dark sky compliant? Because we had an issue in Fort Pond where the neighbor put lights up and it was permitted by our board, but that was prior to the dark sky compliant lights. Basically, the lights have to go down. He had the lights shining in his neighbor's. No, they are. <laughs> and that was a like problem. We, we had that problem in other areas. Yes. That were and, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that thing so, was just put up in 1998. Um, <coughs> I hardly ever have them on, but that being said, I would change them if they were. Oh, right. Change it to dark skies compliance. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, if, that, that legislation. They're so old now that I wouldn't need them on so much. Right. Yeah, yeah, but, just say, just say that, that that you know that bothers them up. You know, then you know, well, get past. I just don't want to trip if we're getting off the boat. Yeah. I, I think. I think <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the assumption. Well, if you're going to do that, then you're going to have to. You, you'd be inconsistent with what the town well, generally does. Yeah, you know, so you got to stay dark sky. Also, right. the guest room is on the right. Well, of course you do. That's right. that's open right now. Oh. We have an open committee. Yeah, of course you do. Working right now. Okay. Yeah. So, the covenant that you're you're speaking of in 2022, 2004. Four. Correct. Yes. We haven't seen that, right? Yeah. No. You, that, that, um, you just Matt Boston saw it and the attorneys did. Yeah. You saw that, Mark. No, Joe, uh, uh, Joe, Joe, you saw it with Joe. Once oh, again, Joe, I think Joe. So, yeah. so, the, so the light posts are on our prior permit. Yeah. It's just we would be now uh, making them dark skies compliant. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly that would be a good condition to put on. But we did have a meeting with uh, Trustee Parsons, Mr. Ryder, and myself. Yeah, so, so we would not be running yeah. afoul no, of the covenant running that he signed. We would, we would actually be going a step further to what yeah, we did correct. with. with 
Dux guys wrestling. So we keep the vault, that's correct. That's cool. The vault, yeah. And then, it's on, and there's a cradle on it, which is no longer there. I don't even have that vault, so I got rid of the cradle. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I think I think getting a vault out of the water is a good idea, but that's just me. And then, and then the, they, the yeah. four foot walk pay is. <laughs> Pros and cons here, yeah, right? He's done with they sink. Yeah. He's finished with boats. He has a yeah, personal four situation. Foot, yeah. Four foot wide walkway is is on there, correct? My I, my recollection, but it don't right. so uh, it don't don't it's on there. It's on there. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just I'm saving you the next yeah. mess. No, what even asked for the four foot wide board to go away? You didn't ask the board. It was only the lift and the lights he was having. Yeah, and he wants to be more defensive. Yeah, yeah. So I, I have a question, question with that, defense. too. Marty lately has been a bit defensive going down to the water, and I can see it with the high water, natural shoreline, and everything yeah. else to keep a wildlife corridor. Mm -hmm. you know, we well, need fun to like pass and repass. Uh, right. There's also right. access to the canal. But that's yeah. like now this. Well. Yeah. What happens is that people's dogs would. Know, so well, he wants kids. to keep them back. What he are you wants saying? He wants them down there or back? No, he wants to remove them. Well, because generally them. speaking, and I, I hate you know, I don't mind dancing, I don't like people stepping on my toes, and I don't like to step on theirs. Right. But the thought is that anything that's seaward of where they're taking that line is like a no no. Right. So if it's a structure that's seaward of that area that he has jurisdiction yeah. on, it's generally. Oh, I, I know that's no. what he does. That's what it is. Just like when, yeah, when they that, was the, that was the question that, that uh, Trustee Parsons asked me to sit in on the meeting was just to make sure that this board really could have the jurisdiction and had jurisdiction. So, yeah, uh, and, 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 there I get this, yeah, and there are instances where the fence goes right to the bulkhead. So, so we would yeah. put a self latching gate. So, you know, right. if you had a dog and people, someone broke down and they wanted to move their boat from point A to point B. That they could go up on your bulkhead and just walk the boat up. You know, that, that was the whole reason. I mean, for that. that's not a bad idea. Is a lad, is a gate, is a gate an answer here that can that can solve all well, our you, you need a, you need Well, that's safety. what I've asked for. Well, well, Marty many, wants no no fence because it's seaward. It's seaward of his line that right. he takes. I, he doesn't I, want I to have any that. structures there. Yeah. And I, you know, well, and nobody I, understand. But we as a board, you know, like this is our jurisdiction now, correct? This ten feet. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, so well, but us the, as a board, are we allowed to say that we, we, we agree with a gate for this application? I would throw a gate and keep it in good. It, but there's a fence up against both sides. Uh, so long as it exists, we're we're going, but we're, we're going property by property. You can ask we're not taking on the whole neighborhood. Oh, oh yeah, no, I know. It's just some place like on the canal makes no sense. To, 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 uh, yeah, everybody it, it goes back to the dance. And you're not going to have a wildlife corridor or anything. Yeah, everybody's yeah. everybody's fence it goes to the bulkhead. Right, He's exactly. probably the new the, the new kid on the block that says I right. want to upgrade my bulkhead. Correct. No, so I wanted to get permit to build my house and this whole thing. Okay, so uh, but what I'm getting at is you're the you're the you're the guinea pig. Exactly. Okay, exactly. so he's the guinea pig of what every other homeowner on this creek is up against mm -hmm. in the future. Right. Okay, and judging by the area that his house is in, I don't see a problem with a fence. To the water line with a, a gate that is accessible and open, you know, can well, be open. Absolutely. It's pass and repass is maintained. What? Do you yeah. have a safety ladder on this boat? Excuse me? Safety ladder there? On, on, the, on the bulkhead. Okay. Is it not? Huh. You, well, somebody falls over. Oh, somebody falls in. Floating dock. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, if you got a floating dock. You have to get on a floating dock. Yeah. And the floating dock is coming out for the winter, staying for the winter. No, it's staying for the winter. Six. I think it's Six by twenty. No, it's five by five by twenty. Five by twenty. There's no big deal to put that up. Ladder. It's just you know yeah, people. Well, I've seen, on it. I've seen people you know, yeah. oh flip kayaks over in areas and they're trying to figure out how they can't get back on. Even getting on a floating get, dock is difficult. They, they want to get up. I can't. <laughs> I can put a ladder. <laughs> it's always good to have safety ladders, you know. It is. Yeah. Especially no. for liability purposes. Yeah. So we just gotta get. Basically, we're okay with the four the four foot walkway. We're okay with the boat lift. We're okay with the lights. As yep. long as they're Dark skies compliant. compliant. And um, the fence. The, fe the, the fence yeah. is where we're all the kind. It the seems funny, like we're having a little different. The funny thing is, is uh, uh, Christian, what's the, the, the building inspector, Chris, uh, I forget his last name, Chris, Christian, something, and Dave and Angie too. 
they came out and said, Steve, you got to have that fence to the bulkhead and even all over the bulkhead where, where the edge of the bulkhead is. And it's got to be four foot high because of the pool. So I did that. I made sure I, the fence was already there, yeah. but I extended it to one foot to go. Oh my God. So you have now you're in between two agents exactly. of the town yeah. when you're trying exactly. to comply with the safety. Yeah. And that pool. same fence was there when I bought the place in 96. I didn't. Yeah. So there's no there's no additional like landward of the buffer no. going the other direction no. just no. totally keep so that pool you're safe. You're trying to keep kids out of your pool, and then you got somebody yeah. that says you got to remove the neighbor, fence. The neighbor's got a nasty dog, that, you know, and or your dog takes off if there's no fence. And, that, and that's like before that. the insurance company gets. I don't want to. I don't want the board to be questions. set to a lawsuit of a pool of changing the fence because there's a pool yeah. in the yard personally. Actually, they also had me going to you my need neighbor's to yard. Dave, yeah. Dave, uh, Andy had me going to my neighbor's yard. He has a six foot high wood stockade fence and the middle rail. He had me cut 45 degree blocks on all the middle rails. And my, I got permission from my neighbor to do that so that nobody could step there and jump over the fence into the pool, right. even though my neighbor has a pool. And we're on a six foot deep fence. I, don't, I want the game. Yeah, well, she's got to pool in the follow yard, the regulations. Yeah, I know that. Well, I, I did it. it. I, I did, did it without the game. in your application. Yeah. Right. So you got those conditions changed that have to be in there? Dark skies and a gate. Safety ladder? Yeah. Safety ladder. And the water's all good? Like, do we don't have a problem with the running? Do you have water out there? Fresh water? Yes. Because that's all, that doesn't that's, that's tie us up. No. It doesn't tie up in with the building department no. or anything? I no. Just, I'm just trying to cover I, your bases. I, I, I agree with you. you get <laughs> just make sure silly, you, you know? can do it. You only want to do this once. Make sure you're okay. No, every, every, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And every 20 something people on that canal have the same thing. They no, I know, but you're the guinea pig. Yeah. yeah. You're, you know, you're the as one that's fact, taking you have a hint, canal so. association. One with yeah. Well, as long well, as you're like, because you need an electrician well, yeah. in order to do this. I was, yeah. As well as, yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to cover your bases. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. That's all you have to do. That's it. Okay, buddy. Oh, sure. Sure. All right. Let's go to First Coastal. Tenements Point Limited Partnership at 36 Second Act Lane in the Village Bog. You, you can come over here for this one. Thanks for your participation in the earlier. I didn't know it was going to be so popular. Well, you, you know, you're, you're involved in all this uh, extracurricular uh, activity going on here. Okay. Tenement's Point Limited Partnership. Okay. Uh, thanks for uh, hearing me this morning. Um, you should have in your packet a drawing uh, showing a, uh, a request to uh, build a catwalk um, into a, a Penniman's Cove, which is an offshoot of Shinnecock Bay. Um, the, just uh, for the board's information, uh, the upland portion of this has already been built. It was built uh, under permits from the village of Clog um, and the uh, New York State DPC. And then uh, after that was done, the owner um, asked me to amend uh, those permits to extend this uh, this tile. Now I think this came before uh, the board a while back, and uh, there was a question about uh, the uh, relationship uh, between uh, this dock and the adjacent dock, and um, also with regards to uh, whether this had the proper separation with regard to the blue book. And so um, I prepared this uh, diagram so I could show you the, the distance between the two permitted docks. The, the one uh, was not built, but it did get a permit from this board for that configuration. And as you can see, there's um, you know, a significant distance between those two structures, so there's no uh, potential for interference in the use of both of them. Uh, the other thing had to do with um, you know the proximity to the property line. That's a problem. Yeah. And um, so what, what I did was um, I looked at the subdivision map as well as the survey. So this is a riparian deed. It runs to the high water line of Penniman's Cove or Shinnecock Bay. So that is actually, the knee high water line is actually the boundary of the property. 
and we're more than 10 feet from any uh, any of the boundaries. So we we we, we comply with with the blue book separation requirement because uh, because uh, the repairing deed places the mean high water line in, in a way that uh, creates a boundary on that, uh, which would be I think the northern the northern boundary of the property. Uh, and other than that, it's pretty, you know, the, it's the simply you, a you calculate that? Yeah, I remember, I remember looking at this a couple of times. What was it, like a 110 foot catwalk or something? It was a monster catwalk over like wetlands and like See, a little forest. 155 feet. Right. Oh, yeah. was really big, yeah. One well, big well, that's big. that's the upland portion, which I said is is permanently yeah. built. That's um, right. The ten foot village. thing is, I don't want to. And then on GAS, I do remember it was, a, if you can pull it up on GAS, there was, when you looked at it that way, and the extended property line of the neighbor there did look like it it, it went over. Right, we're back on this one again. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So what did you? I remember it was close. You had it angled out there, and also. Right. Right. Which was better, but uh, it's up to the board to decide whether or not it's. Uh, well, I it's think over it has the to do foot. With, with you know with the property lines and um, uh, and you know the the, uh, the mean high water is the property line, and because uh, this is you know a curved shoreline, if you you know take the property to uh, to, what is that, to the west, I guess, um, and you know it's it's a cove. So, you know, to extend one or more property lines strictly uh, along the axis that comes from the upland, um, it, you know, is not appropriate. The object in, in a cove or a setting like that is what they call the rule of the, of the I, where you extend it to the center uh, of the cove area and everybody gets their fair share of access. So, I mean, if, if all you did was extend the property line on the left side of this property, and just extended that along its axis. Um, you know. Yeah, but that's not necessarily the property line. We own the water. Right. We own the property under the water. That's correct. Yeah. So, in order, in order for you to make that pie, that pie to work, like is that is that how you're trying to gain the ten foot on either side, basically, yeah. is utilizing our property. Well. Um, the, the application utilizes trustee property no matter which way we put it. Yeah. Whether we put it directly at the very end of this uh, of this pie shaped property. When they're dying for a, a dock, you know, so that well, it's you know, they're, it's you know, it's a it's a catwalk, really. Yeah. So we have yeah, we, 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 yeah. So based on this, so this is this is a here. really unique. Yeah. Here's your property lines, right? Yeah. This property over here ends right here, and this <coughs> property ends here. So, does this look to be violative of our uh, regulations, Mark? Well, if you were extending the other property line, you could say it was because it's angled out in front of where that other property line would be extended. Yeah. Last time I checked on yeah, I mean, even every other application that we've ever had has never allowed anything going in front of the ten foot of yeah. the other property. But it is it now. It's a, it's a minimal, and it's angled off to the side, so you never even see it. Yeah. Is there a way to um, differentiate this based on the circumstances? Because I don't want to. I don't want to have a. Okay. This is because the ten foot. Becomes yeah. problematic for us. I understand that. Beach, beach, we, you know, the, the, why can't they just dead end it right on the beach? Oh, well, that's where it is right now. Uh, they'd like they'd like to get into the water. Um, if, what I would say to you is that the New York State they Supreme can't walk Court, down the beach. Yeah, they can. Okay. okay, but but they have a repair and right of access, and, and they'd like to have it. Well, but they have I, it already. I, well, they'd like to have it. You know, the ability to walk out is a, is a repairing right, and they'd like to exercise that right. are not over the other purpose person exactly exactly yeah. right so what i would what i would suggest to your council and to the board is there's a case called erico versus weinstein where the new york state supreme court has ruled that in a situation such as this 
the rule of, of the pie is what is applied. And, and the case is very clear. They go through the, the evaluation of it. And if you'd like me to lay that out on this parcel, I'd be happy See, to do that. Is, I think what we want to do is, because like, like Ed said, it's very, it is minimal where you're at right now. And it's just that in other areas, we do have a problem because people are trying to push things to the left and to the right because they don't want to look their neighbors in it. It becomes a problem. And we, I think we, I, the rule of pie, and I, I do like pie, you know, <laughs> but I think that we also want to use the rule of common sense. Right, the food. right, common sense. So if we can, if we can kind of do the pie with the common sense there somehow and not create a dangerous precedent of, well, they did this here, right. you know what I mean? Well, that, that's can, where we, can I ask you, I know the Army Corps has a different standard. What did you get their permit? Uh, that, that permit, uh, both the, the DEC and the, and the Corps permit was went in at the same time as you got it. I expect I'm going to hear back from them. I think maybe what Because we, I know they have a 15-foot set. More. Yeah, I, I think they're going to actually be fine with this because it, the, the mean high water is what controls the property line. Um, but what I would suggest and what I, what I will do uh, is I will take that Erico versus Weinstein case. I will apply the, the criteria that the court established and lay it out on this. On this I think that's, that's that would be good if you could do that because this needs to be di differentiated as a unique situation that you're pointing out. I think is really important. So if you can well, do that, see, see, I do have an issue. Uh, if you want to go straight out further, I feel that you know the character of the area and, and, the, and the fishing that goes on there, going further out to the west, I believe, going in, would be problematic. Putting it where you're proposed right now would be the, if it, the board would agree, would be, would be the best uh, siding of the uh, Well, the, I think he needs the, to do what, he's, what he well, says. Well, let's give, give us the information and we can make yeah. a better decision. I'll, I'll make a drawing and lay it out. Visually. And that, yeah, I think that makes sense. And, I think that's okay. and you can uh, email that over to our Lombard, uh, Joe Lombardo, or Council. Do you have a citation on that case? Well, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll send you the case. Yeah, if you could send okay, that. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron, yeah, if you it, it, send it to me too, if you don't mind. Thank yeah, I, I yeah. This way we can get some uh, differentiation here. Yeah, this is a, this be a problematic uh, thing for us with these docks on these small pieces of property or pie shaped pieces of property. So, well, as I said, the pool was kind of running out of big pieces of property, so now we're into the small pieces yeah. of property. Devil is in the detail. Yeah. This is also, um, and also forward to uh, to both attorneys and the board, the uh, OGS, Office of General Services, who owns the underwater, you know, manages the underwater land for the state of New York, has a whole series of how you allocate uh, dock space in varying situations. And it's, I've well, used it many times over the years. So I, Found it to be a very valuable, so I'll send that along as well, just so you can see it. Because there's, believe it or not, there's a half a dozen different ways to do this. Well, I don't want to, I don't want us to set good. a precedent that we're going to be sorry for moving in the future. I'm not thrilled with it, but I understand. That well, let's look at it. Let's <laughs> look at it because it needs to be set aside from. It's a unique situation. I think it needs to be seen as that because we don't want to set the precedent. You want to. Be able to. We got to make sure that we're not setting up. That's my point. Yeah. Yeah. That's my point. That's why I want him to provide that. That's why council is going to look at that. And that's why I said this is great. I like pie, but common sense also needs to come into play. All right, we'll do. Thank you all for your time this morning. Yep. Thank you. And thank you for your information at the other. Yes. To. Uh, <laughs> Issues. All right. We have. That's all you have today. Well, that's really. Well, that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna hold we're gonna it until hold we. Aram's gonna get us some more we information. Need to call the council quite a bit on this one. Yes. What um. So next one you have. Who's is this? Is this a, this is this one here? That's that's Scott's. Mm -hmm. yes, goes into your it goes into yes, your file. Yes, mine. Um, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. John uh, Gilgan, uh, forty one Oak Lane, Hampton Bays. Uh, Ernie Spellman. He's not here. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. Do. Discuss it or? Well, we we've, we've discussed it, and it was issues with the material. Correct, James. So, so there's still issues that we need to discuss with the. I thought we resolved most of that stuff. Is this the one that had the big mesh and they're just rebasing the bulkhead? Yeah, you guys looked at the bulkhead and there's really all kinds of layers. The pure, thing is the pure, uh, it's replaced 118 uh, feet of uh, bulkhead using Navy style structure along with. Two twelve foot returns, shore guard for twenty five vinyl or similar marine grade uh, goods, marine grade, and then uh, galvanized hardware. Bulkhead will be accompanied by a ten foot uh, non fertilization buffer zone backfill of approximately thirty yards of clean sand, along with um, island uh, natural gravel and native vegetation grasses uh, to the engineer plans. They propose to install a four by 100 um, uh, foot long uh, open grate direct decking uh, access to the bay with the engineered plans. Pier can, will be constructed using non treated green heart and tropical lumber. Along with uh, marine grade galvanized hardware, there will be two sets of tie off piles, one on the east and one on the west side of the pier. We also propose a four foot by uh, 30 foot grade level ramp uh, from the uh, slope backyard leading through the non fertilization buffer. We will install pass and repass sliders on uh, the bulkhead um, nest to the next to the bulkhead. So, pretty much, I think we got everything we need there. Do we have the planting schedule, like the plant spacing and all that determined? Um, what species? That part I don't know. And then also, was, this wasn't the one we had a wrestling match with. The, there was a deck before. No. No, I think it's all. This was Blue Book compliant. This this yeah. one here. It's all Blue Book compliant. This one here. This the the plans were the here. You had the plans with the other stamp. I thought you had them. I thought we had we had we thought we didn't have them, but we did have them. I thought. Thought we have the plans from here. I don't have them up. This is the. I, I thought we. I thought we cleared this up. Yeah, there's there's an engineered stamp plans right there. On the pier. Bulkhead, bulkhead, wait, stuck, stuck together. Bulkhead, 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 bulkhead. What's that right there? There's the pier. There, 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 there's the pier. Yep, this, this sheet stamped. Actually, yeah, it, I see. Yep. Yeah, there's a stamp. Here. Yep. Yeah. So what this is? That's the pier. Licensed professional engineer. Orlando, he's an engineer. And you go to the the pier itself. Yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right. You saw that. Yeah. You have everything here then. That's. And there's no. Uh, Mention of uh, treated lumber in here. Anything so is. that was the uh, one of the other sticking points. So I, I like to advance it. I see, sure, it's indicating it's blue book compliant. Okay. So okay. That, was, that was my only worry. Just not having it. Not in here. Yeah. Required. No, well, we we'll have to scan that. Draw it's going to scan it in. Yep. So All right. So we're good to go then. Okay. So advance that. So now we have uh, Peconic. Wait. Yeah, that's the only one we have for that person. Now we have Peconic environmental. Which is 361 Dune Road, Bridgehaven. Good morning. Good morning. Questions, 
pretty straightforward. They just wanted to, to increase the rows of fencing from two to five. <coughs> There's no infringement on the access and egress on the original side, so I don't see a problem with it myself. Okay. Advance. Should I, should I answer that correct? Perfect. Did his job. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Next one we have, we just, well, you have one that's not coming, right? Yeah, Harry, Bernie Harry. Not Sorry. coming. And then we have Shoreline Bulkheading, Captain's Neck, Realty LLC. Oh, so um, I, I had to do a um, site visit there, so I also, the um, applicant, applicant couldn't make it today, so um, I'm going to on hold. hold that down. Okay. So that's on hold. And we did the next one. 45 Cedar, uh, this is, it's the, we call them then, uh, the applicant wants to shorten their catwalk and also, uh, Change dimensions. So I just I just figured James and her, and Charles on this. So James, if you want, to, uh, yeah. So shortly uh, after you guys approved this um, application, uh, the DEC asked them to reduce the width of the uh, both the bridge and the catwalk on the deck next to it um, by one foot to four feet instead of five feet, um, and also. The Yes. So it's going to reduce the overall split, uh, square foot. foot of the project, reducing the fees. So we're looking to amend it um, so that it can lower the additional five foot fees. So, so he's smiling for a modification. It's, it's a, well, yeah. that's the that's the question for the board um, since it's not been we approved it, but we've we approved it, but it hasn't been paid for to him yet because he hasn't paid the fees. But, we, but now we're modifying the plan. We're just amending it to make a smaller footprint of the project. Yeah. Right. So right. it's what's a less the height of the change. But it's this, we're, so we're getting into a money thing. So we're, are we going to not charge them for a modification? That's the idea. That's or, the question. Or are we going to allow them just to amend it? Yeah. So he, he jumped the ball. He basically came to us before the DEC approved the project, correct? Apparently. Because he. But yeah. yeah, they've they've been changing. But lot. normally we wait for a full approval of the DEC before they come to the south end. Well, was it the yeah, yeah. necessarily wait for the DEC? We issue our permit. You gotta, what? You gotta come up, Jeff. Yeah, I mean, I, I we just, recommend we normally recommend that you get all the other entities before you come to us, so that way we don't have yeah. this problem. Correct. Right. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's up to that. So yeah, J yeah. James, the the original uh, fee for the larger structure. Well, it is. What was the fee versus the new fee for a small structure? And if it's amended. Well, the thing is, do you have to pay a modification? Well, the, the point being, we issued a permit for him to do X, which is what he asked for. Yeah. Whether or not he had permission from the DEC, he was asking for X. If he built less, if he builds less than what the permit allowed. We certainly weren't going to fit. We would certainly not fail him right. for not conforming to the to the permit requirement because he was within the confines that was allowed. But he hasn't. But he hasn't done any work yet. So. Well, but the bottom line is, is that's his permit, and yeah, his permit is 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 issued upon the square footage that, that he right. applied for. Yeah, correct. I mean, so I wouldn't see where there would be any money due and owing him. I mean, if he could get the DEC so to, uh, it, to, if he appeals to the DEC and they give him that back that foot, would he then have to come back to us and yeah, right. a man that has for yeah. that? So we're spending know. money in house. We're spending money with our staff to amend permits. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically. the way I'm looking at it. I'm so not looking at it in terms of not being a bad guy, not being a good guy. But the question just, is, yeah. right? But are we yeah. modifying this now? Where he's paying? It's not really a modification. So he doesn't he doesn't need a modification. Is what you're saying? Right. We're so he allowed, doesn't have to pay a modification more, fee. It's this done. is one of these weird events where we're allowing more than what the DEC would be allowing. Usually it's well, the other way he, around. He's paying for a lot more than what he's going to put in. Yeah. With the dimensional fees. Right. So I, I don't. Yeah. So we're I don't see charging whatever to, times equals. I don't think it's charging an amendment fee on top well, we, of that. You no. wouldn't have to amend it. Yeah. Well. No. He can take our permit to the bank. The DEC is not going to complain if he builds according to their spec. Yeah, but he's looking to amend it so. It so he doesn't want to pay the dimensional fees for the bigger yeah. thing without paying for a modification fee. So I think 
So right. We, so he we, needs he wants to, us to modify it. The fee, so we do have to modify it now. So we're back in working on this again. Well, yeah, but it's so that, still costing our, our uh, staff is costing the trustee money to do it. Yeah, so but then it's a modification fee yeah. and then a proper yes, dimensional yeah. fee. If it's so that's order. how it's got to be done. He's got to do a modification and then we amend it to yeah. make it what it is. So he has to file for a modification since our permit is issued. And then we adjust the dimensional fees to match what we're permitting. Which is going to be substantially point. less right. than the original. Correct. Even with the uh, amendment fee of $400. Yes, I'd, I'd say that's, I'd say that's, that's what we have to do. Okay. Right? That's right. Right? That's it. But then when we send the dock inspection down there matches. to match what we permitted, yeah. right. it, because yeah. I remember George... He did inspections in the doctor. We've had an issue before where violations yeah, were issued because people came. Right. Them what was right. right. That's right. And I tried to explain to him that just right. because they didn't okay, so, it doesn't mean Right. So, based on the fact that this is not, it, we approved it, but he hasn't paid it. It's not out the door yet. He yeah. can pay for a modification. We can amend it, go like Trustee Marin said. Yep. Just staff's going to go back to work on it, change everything back to matching. Exactly, mm -hmm. and then dimensional fees will mimic what yeah. it picks up that day. One more step to some yeah. degree. Yeah. All right, so we'll work with council to make sure that the fee is Adjusted. correct because he's going to be paying five hundred dollars for he, it, it, right. So because we got to go back to work on it exactly, yeah. 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 and then you guys are, are good to advance it pending the modification. Yeah. Yeah. It work. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. And, and then we need to stamp plans because it's going to be a new set of right. Plans. Right. Which I believe. Well, yeah, you don't. You don't have to do it now, but it's yeah, but it's be, just it's make sure be, it all matches. You want it back on for the next work session that you're review, or yeah, I mean, I, well, we what do you, we don't. I don't think we need it on for the next work. I, I don't think we need it back it's on. It's it's right. Stamp stamp plans and approve it. Yeah, yeah. It, Charge just on the modification fee, adjust the square footage, and approve the pond that we have stamp hands matching that matching and, the new yeah application. and that could go on for resolution of the stamp plan right. approval i yeah. will we'll, we'll put it under fee yeah stamp yeah. plans yep. so yes yeah. be on mm -hmm. the next workshop yes to review the stamp plan yes yeah. mm -hmm. and then as long as you get modification paperwork done yeah. Yeah. thanks as james as everything is acceptable Clean. charlotte and you then we can just do what we have to do i see and i saw i saw mr mack nodding his head back there so i think he got his seal of approval as well <laughs> I live for yeah, it. but we're, we're going to be it's kind of what makes Scott, sense, you know. Scott, we're going to be in the process of hiring a dock inspection person, and we're going to have to go over all these Correct. little nuances so we don't get glitches as, as soon as later start. today. I mean, yeah. I mean, more. I mean, I know that that's that's back, and then it, this costs us money. Well, yeah. it's just like, let's just keep this in mind because we've had this. Yeah, I know. We people, can't. People yeah. will hold a permit for a year now. Change it. Want to amend it? Amend it. So it's it's happened before, and it's always been like yeah, all over the map. Well, now so if we've approved it, they're asking for us to approve to Council Lombardo's point. You know, we've given you what you've asked for. You know, now you're asking for something. Yeah, different. right. right. So now we we're, we're back to work to your point. Yeah, but right. The bookkeeping. So, yeah. Why? The inflexibility of, yeah. of the bookkeeping program that we but have you, to use. But you can't talk from there. You got to talk yeah. from All right. there. Okay. <laughs> Are we good? Yeah, I think we're good. All right. So we're 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 good with that. Okay. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, Helen Fair from Fifty Eight South Bay Avenue in Eastport, represented by the owner, who really doesn't have to be here. You can take right. I spoke to her about it, and uh, yeah, I believe we have all the stamp plans, and it was just an expired permit that we were going to be renewing. Um, no changes to the permit. We were compliant. It was an oversight. Right. So we just want to make it all proper. Mm -hmm. Dotting I's and crossing T's is very important. Right. So this could advance. Okay. okay. And then um, we already did the 191, right? Yep. We did. Okay. So the next part, general permit applications for determination for final stamp plans. I have James Price, 28 East Rampaster Road, Hampton Bays. <coughs> Permits. See that. Okay. And we have Susan Rose. Susan Rose, 14 Carmel Road, Hampton Bays.
Stand clearance with that. Good. You're good. Okay. Can you advance it? Advance that. You've got them on there. Michael Vincent. Michael Vincent. One on and on. All right, so good. Concludes our advance, advance, advance. concludes our work session agenda for this morning. We can uh, we can adjourn and go to exec, and um, we can be on our way. And if anyone has anything else, we're good. Um, the Army Corps started pumping these for coastal. Army Corps is starting to uh, do their their uh, work. Uh, they're set up just as you enter the Quad Canal. There's a lot of gear there. Um, so you turn west. Yeah, they're, yeah, so if you're heading from Shinnecock and you're making your way into uh, the Quad Canal heading west, you're going to you're gonna bump into that, and you're going to see uh, uh, some equipment also on the Southampton town in the western side of Shinnecock. You're going to see that, and you're going to see a lot of pipes laid out because you have <laughs> material getting pumped as far as uh, west of Shinnecock Canal. And on the east <coughs> side as, as well, uh, with this part of the, uh, the project. So if you're taking your boat and you're you're going to make your way up and down the quad canal just beware you're going to see a lot of equipment and you're going to see you know all kinds of pipes and things and you're going to want to transit that very, very, very carefully very cautiously you're in a six mile an hour no wake zone as it is so you should you know really uh, pay attention so that's a good project they're starting to the west and they're going to work their way to the east but that is underway uh, that project uh, is scheduled to be finished within two months uh, with all the logistics and whatnot. Um, thousands and thousands of cubic yards of, uh, of uh, fine, you know, nice sand um, to get our intracoastal waterway back to specifications um, as per the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, it's HL contracting that has a, a, been awarded that contract. And they are diligently working on it. And it's been a long time coming. Yeah. So um, to the public, are they going to be putting the sand up to Tiana Beach? On the other side? There's going to be some right going on the Bay side. Is going as to, we talk, they're pumping it. Right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're pumping over there. Any more on in front of it? Uh, wow. yeah. yeah, they're going to. They're going to. Yes, they are. Yes, so they are. About thirty-eight thousand cubic yards of it. The, the lion's share of that project is going to be. It's going to be in what they call Wilson West of Shinnecock in that area. That's where the lion's share of the project is going to be. Some of it is going to um, is going to go to Tiana Bayside. Some is going to bolster up some trusty properties that are like south of the Shaguan Arena in that whole area where you've got a, a bunch of lowlands and properties there of the trustees to bolster that up. So three, there's three uh, spots there. This is an Army Corps project. <clears throat> you, you're changing an Army Corps project. It's literally an act of Congress to do that. So <laughs> we cannot go out can't of it. you yeah. cannot go out of what is deemed to be the federal you know, recognized channels. And this is what the project's going to be. You have some you know, great, obviously local uh, knowledge that is you know, directing this and, and working on this. And it's been a long time coming for our community to get this project advocacy by this report for years and years to finally get to this point. Um, because these areas uh, are intracoastal, they needed to be uh, dredged and you had people that at certain tides mid to low that were hitting bottom there. So this is really important for our community to yep. have done. Um, but you do, right now, you have to be careful if you're out there running around, you know, you know pay attention and don't, you know, don't get caught up in any of that. And the Shinnecock locks are fixed. Which is, and, and coincidentally, the same contractor with HL yeah. fixed that canal locks, and I think he did it in, in a really good time. I know yeah. we thought the estimates were going to be a lot greater, so it's always better to beat your estimates. And um, that is a, a big help because you find out, you know, how, you know, badly the Shinnecock canal locks affect commerce, especially at this time of the year. Um, aside from everybody wanting to go fishing or cruising and recreationally, you have people that make decisions on where they're going to have their services done and their winter haul outs done. And you, you know, as you got the telephone calls from people and the emails, you saw how greatly this waterway does affect commerce. Um, and not to mention recreation and fishing. And being that we're such a maritime community, um, 
you know, thanks to the county exec and everybody at the county that was able to get on that right away, get good contractors that knew what they were doing and get us back in business. It even greatly affected our pump out program because we rely on the county and the points to the north of the canal locks to pump out our pump out boats to make sure that we don't have that effluent going into our base. So it has an environmental effect to us as well. So um, it's that like, you know, ripple effect of things that occur. Um, maybe some folks don't realize how one thing affects another thing, but thankfully it's all good now. Yep. Everything's good. So that being said, we have some executive discussions to have. And if, if there's not anything more, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Seconded by Trustee Barron. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's go into exec for the discussion of uh, contracts, uh, <coughs> litigation, and personnel issues. We'll see everybody this afternoon. Thank you.